Okay, welcome to this video where we'll be going over Chapter 11, Section 2. All of the practice questions here are just for you to follow along with. There'll be no way for you to submit them or get them graded. You just follow along and make sure you're using them to help you learn. So Chapter 11, Introduction to Genetics. This is Section 2. There are terms to describe the setup of alleles that any individual has, and you need to know these terms. If they have two copies of a dominant allele, in this example, two alleles for yellow seeds, they are called homozygous dominant. If they have two copies of the recessive version of the allele, so, for example, two alleles for green seeds, then they are homozygous recessive. And if they have two different alleles, in this example, one yellow and one green, they are heterozygous. Remember uh, the prefixes, homo means the same and hetero means different. These terms describe the genotype of the individual. A genotype is the genetic makeup of the alleles. It doesn't describe what the individual looks like, it describes the alleles that it has. But we could use the genotype to figure out the phenotype. That's the trait that is expressed, okay, so it says color. So you should notice that um, the heterozygous and homozygous dominant individuals have different genotypes but the same phenotypes. Okay, so for our examples up here, um, our heterozygous dominant has two yellow alleles and our, our heterozygous has one yellow and one green, but they have the same phenotype. They're both yellow and it's because they both have that dominant yellow one in there. So this one has no choice but to be yellow as two yellow alleles. But this one, the heterozygous, has one yellow, which is dominant over the green. So all you see is yellow. And then homozygous recessive has a different phenotype. It has the phenotype that's green because it, it only has green alleles. It has nothing else. All right. Now, jumping into the next thing. Due to this principle of dominance, where you have dominant and recessive alleles, we can figure out the probability of any trait showing up in offspring if we know the genotype of the parents. Now the way that we demonstrate this is with a Punnett square. Okay, so that's the name for this diagram. You see them in your textbook. We figure out the parent's genotype segregate the alleles and put the alleles for one parent across the top and one down the side. So our genotype for one parent is capital A, little a. Now remember I said at the beginning capital A is going to be yellow, lowercase a is going to be green. Um, so we split them apart, we segregate them and put each one across the top. So basically these are our options. If you're inheriting a gene you could inherit a capital A or you could inherit a lowercase a. Then we do the same thing down the side. We have capital and lowercase. It just happens to be the same and that's what we have as options down the side for this plant. You could inherit capital or lowercase. Now that we have our edges filled out with the parents, so when you have a Punnett square, the top row and the side row are the parents and then um, the rest of the chart is going to be the offspring. So now that we have all of that um, across the top and the side, we can find all the possible combinations of the offspring. Simply write the allele from the top of the column in all the squares in that column, and then write the allele at the left of each row in every square in that row. And now you're done. And this is every possible combination of alleles that could happen in the offspring of these two plants.
you will see that some combinations appear more than once. So for example, we have a capital A and a little a, a capital A and a little a. So if they appear there more than once, then they have a higher percentage of the offspring that will have that genotype. So let's look at some numbers. Um, in this example, and this is the same example that we just saw, I just moved it to the next slide, a heterozygous plant crossed with a second heterozygous plant, one out of four of the offspring will get a homozygous dominant genotype. Okay, so, um, sorry, there we go. One out of four will have that genotype. You know, here are four, four squares of offspring, only one of them was homozygous dominant. Two out of four, or 50%, will be heterozygous, and one out of four will be homozygous recessive. Now remember, that's the genotypes, but the phenotypes are different. Phenotypes is the color that we actually see. So three out of four have at least one dominant allele, and so 75% of the offspring, three out of four, will be yellow because they have that dominant allele. Only 25% will be green. Because only 25% have no dominant allele, just the recessive allele. So as a general rule, you're, you're almost always going to end up having many more individuals with the dominant trait than the recessive trait. And you've got to remember that the genotypes are not the same as the phenotypes. So our, our genotypes for this example, and they're different for every example, but for this example, our genotypes were 25%, 50% and 25%. But our phenotypes are different. We've only got two phenotypes. We've either got yellow or green. There's nothing in between. So you got 75% and then 25% are green. And one more question that was answered by Mendel's work was whether traits stick together. If he had tall plants with green seeds and he had short plants with yellow seeds, what would happen if he crossed them? Would the height and color traits stick together? Would it be possible to get tall offspring with yellow seeds? The answer is um, that most traits are able to be split up and shuffled. And this principle is called independent assortment. The genes for height and color can be split up. So you can end up having a tall plant with yellow seeds because you don't have to inherit both traits from the same parent together. Okay, and this is something you could see in people. This is why um, you could inherit you know, your father's nose but your mother's eyes because they're independently assorted. You don't necessarily get all the same genes as um, other offspring do. So your sister and brother might have um, a different set of features inherited from the parents because you, they got different combinations of genes. So we're going to show independent assortment for genes with height and color. And these are the alleles that we're going to use. Height will have a capital T for tall, which is the dominant trait, and a lowercase t for short, which is the recessive trait. Color will have a capital A for tall, for yellow, which is the dominant trait, and a lowercase a for green, which is the recessive trait. And we will start an example on the next slide that has both parents that are heterozygous for both traits. So if this is the mom plant here, okay, we've got a mom and a dad. So if the mom plant will have both a tall allele and a short allele, so it's heterozygous, it's got both. And then it's also going to have both a yellow allele and a green allele. So it's heterozygous for um, height here, and it's heterozygous for color. And then the dad plant will have the exact same setup. 
So this is just the example that we're going to do. And um, independent assortment of this can be shown within bigger Punnett square. Um, and what you need to do to start is have every possible combination of alleles from the dad plant on the top and the mom plant down the side. So across the top, those combinations are tall and yellow, short and yellow, tall and green, and short and green. Then you put every possible combination of alleles from the mom down the side, and in this case, they will be the exact same options. Tall and yellow, short and yellow, tall and green, short and green. Now, just like before, we fill them in down the columns. Okay, so everything from the top column, you just fill in into every block under it. And same thing across the rows. Everything in the first row gets that. And then it's just the same for every row. So filling them in down the columns and across the rows like this gives every possible combination of alleles of the offspring. Now, the phenotypes for this is more complicated when you're looking at two traits because now there's different combinations that we could have of height and color. So having both dominant traits, tall and yellow, is the most common with nine of these example offspring having at least one tall gene and one yellow gene. So remember, um, these are the dominant traits, so they only need one. You only need one capital letter for color to get yellow, and you only need one capital letter for height to get tall. Um, so there's a total of nine of these that have that. The next possibility is to have one dominant trait and one recessive trait. So three of the example offspring will be tall but have green seeds. So Tall is, oops, okay, well, three, I don't know what happened with my examples there. Okay, um, okay, three of the examples will be tall and have green seeds, um, but three of them will be short but have yellow seeds. So both of these are examples where you have um, one dominant trait. In this case, the dominant is yellow, and the recessive trait is short. Um, or in this case over here, the dominant trait is tall, and the recessive is green. Um, so both of those have three of each. So you've got um, both cases where you have one dominant trait and one recessive trait. And out of all of our options, you get three that are short and yellow and three that are tall and green. And then the most rare possibility is having two recessive traits. So if there's only one example of offspring that is both short and has green seeds. Okay, so this is the only block where there's no dominant traits to block out those recessive traits. So whenever two parents that are heterozygous for both traits, so that's what we've got going on up here, heterozygous for both traits, heterozygous for both traits, whenever that's the case and you cross those two parents, you're always going to end up with this ratio for the alleles of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. So you need to remember that um, 9, where they are both dominant, is the most common. Uh, it's very rare to have one where they're both recessive, so that's why it's only one. And then in between are the two versions that have one, one dominant trait and one recessive trait, and those are three. So out of these 16 offspring examples, you get nine, three, three, and one. Okay, so review questions again. Different genes are not usually inherited together. They get shuffled into different combinations. This is called what? 
Let me just bring up that poll. All right, so different genes, so completely separate genes, things like color and height, not related at all. Different genes are not usually inherited together. They get shuffled around. So what is the term to describe the genes getting shuffled around I'm like that? It looks like someone just joined recently. That's okay. You can answer this question. I can't see your individual answers, just the group's answers. And I need more people to vote. So everybody think about it. Choose your answer. I'm going to give you another 10 seconds or so. Okay, so not everybody voted, but uh, at least I got some of you too. Um, but not two-thirds of you got the wrong answer and one-third of you got the right answer. So the right answer here is independent assortment. Different genes get shuffled around when they're inherited. They are not inherited together. Okay, again, you can, have, you can inherit your mom's eyes and your dad's nose and your mom's ears and your dad's lips. Like it just um, everything getting shuffled around. In plants, we're talking about height and color. Um, th those two things get split up and, and shuffled around in the offspring so that we get something like this where we have 16 different ways that they can get shuffled up and we end up having four different phenotypes that you can get. Okay, so that happens due to independent assortment. Okay, those genes are independent of each other. So a lot of people said principle of dominance. That's not what this is. So the principle of dominance is that one gene will be dominant over another. But that has nothing to do with how they're sorted and split up in the offspring. And also, um, nobody said segregation. That's good. Segregation is when we're only talking about two alleles from the same gene. So you have two alleles for color. Um, they, they get split up when the organism reproduces. And one more review question. So when we're talking about making Punnett squares like we just did, um, if we have a parent, so let's say we have a mom plant and a dad plant, and this is our mom plant, and its genotype is this, capital A, little a, capital B, capital B. Um, when we go across the Punnett square, we're going to find every combination we can of those letters. So which one of these would not show up in that Punnett square? So I'll give you a chance to think about that and answer that question. Okay, I'd like to see some more votes. Ooh, almost everybody voted. I'll give you another five seconds for the last people. Okay, so the vote on this one is pretty split, so we're going to go over this a little bit. Um, I know this is hard to do without writing it all down, and you've you know, maybe never seen these Punnett squares before. So it's going to look like this. So when we have two traits like this, we have an A and a B trait. 
the row on the top, okay, for one parent, has to have every combination of A's and B's that you can have. So if you take the capital A and the capital B, that goes here. You take the capital, another capital B, because there is no B. You have a lowercase a and a capital B. and then the lowercase a and another capital. Three of our options are exactly the same, but that's okay. That means that's going to affect what percentage of the You can kind of think of it, um, when I say that we need to have every combination, so we have a, a, b, Okay, so when I say we need to have every combination, and it's okay that we're repeating some of these because we're we're looking at combinations um, like saying just the first one and the second one. So we have the the first two, that's one combination. The second two, that's one combination. Um, the outside ones, so the first A and the last B, and then the inside ones. So that's four different combinations we could get. So um, for our actual question. Um, this is, capital A, capital B is definitely one that we'll actually have. Um, little a, capital B is one that we'll have. And our third option we can't have, so that's the one that's not going to be in the Punnett square, uh, because there is no little b. So we can't have a little b because it, it doesn't exist, we only have capital Bs. So this is different than the examples that we just went over, but it's just another example of a type of parent that you could have that goes into these Punnett squares. Okay, so I just want to review some key points from these sections. Um, traits are inherited because genes are transferred from parents to offspring. And different versions of a gene are called alleles. An individual has two copies of every gene, so they have two alleles. And they could be two different alleles or two of the same allele. Having two different alleles is called being heterozygous, and two of the same are called homozygous. And it's either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Traits from recessive alleles are not are only seen if there is not a dominant allele present. They appear in homozygous recessive individuals only. They don't appear in heterozygous individuals because the dominant allele covers them in the heterozygous individuals. Two copies of gene segregate when egg and sperm cells are produced so that each parent only gives one copy of the gene to offspring. An independent assortment means that most unrelated genes are not passed down together parent gives each offspring different random combinations of the genes. And that brings us to the end of this section. Um, come back next week for the next half of chapter 11. And if you're not here live but you want some help, here are some ways that you can contact your instructors.